Honorable Governor of Kerala, Justice P. Satajma, other distinguished members on the dais, Kerala thought leaders, education leaders who have been recognized today by this future Kerala function on the future of education for Kerala. Very happy to be here to preside over this very important function. And I would like to thank Future Kerala for inviting me to be a part of this function because uh, all of us in some way owe our future, owe, owe what we are today to inspire teachers who have inspired us to do and become what we are. So in a way, by recognizing the education leaders and requesting us to be a part participant of this meeting, we are also very honored. The, uh, the, from the talks that we have listened to in the morning uh, and, the, and the excellent uh, lectures that we have heard, many very important issues have been flagged with regard to what is important for the future of education in Kerala. There was talk about equity, access to education. There was also talk about excellence. How do we create motivated and motivated learners? How do we improve their uh, character, the personality? You had some very fascinating talks. And I'm very happy that uh, we, the present governor of Kerala, Sri, uh, Justice V. Sadashivam, is somebody who is very, very keenly interested in promoting education in Kerala. He was one who was very instrumental in installing the Chancellor's Award for the Universities of Kerala. And I have been very honored to be a member of that committee which selects the, the uh, previous awards. And I have seen his commitment. And when you look at many of the issues that were flagged today, you will see that when we consider the parameters for evaluating these universities, many of these parameters actually come in. And over the years, we have been seeing that as this, uh, the, the universities submit their proposals for being evaluated, we can see that these uh, universities are taking these things into consideration. And we can see, as, with, from year to year, we are seeing a significant improvement in the quality of these universities. In uh, Professor Kunjari, I said, just touched upon this age being in the, uh, the uh, digital age or the era of the digital, digital, digital age. Uh, and there was also somebody else who mentioned about it. I am not someone who is back from the education background. I am from a uh, scientist by profession. So I think I should talk a little bit about how and how these ages have been evolving and what that implies. One of the important things is that the rate, the rate at which the world is changing is so rapid. What is considered as knowledge or useful knowledge today can become something that is obsolete in a few years to come. So this is something just I would just like to track how when we talk about these ages or these cycles, when you talk about uh, science and technology cycles, how they have affected civilization. Let me just quickly take you through that. Because the first industrial, first cycle in science and technology is known as what is known as the industrial, uh, industrial cycle that was evolved when we actually found the steam engine. And that created industry. And that happened sometime in the early 18th century. And subsequently, then the discovery of electricity and magnetism, and then the automobile industry, then you had the industrial worker, that was the unionized industrialized worker. Yeah, so first, we had the industrial revolution which created the industrial worker, but then when we came to the, uh, to the other mag uh, electricity, magnetism, and the automobile industry, you created the unionized, uh, uh, unionized labor. Now the third revolution is what is known as when, uh, towards the end of the 19th century where you had discovery of the lasers and the semiconductor. What had happened as that is giving rise to what we call the next generation or the next wave where we have res resulted in what we call the digital age or the electronic age or the age of robotics and artificial intelligence. The thing that is happening with this is that what we created in terms of creating labor and unionized labor, suddenly we find that labor is becoming something that is disposable. So how do we prepare our citizens for this future? Therefore, we have to be proactive, and that is when I think many of the ideas that were expressed by many speakers have to be taken into consideration. And one of the main things that we have to take is the fact that we have to think to bring out the individuality of the students. And uh, Professor Kunjaria was talking how important it is that we, ab we are able to change our education system rapidly so that we, uh, we prepare our students for the future. And innovation, this is something that I had also mentioned, is going to be the key. 
how do we provide the capacity to our citizens to become innovative, to find solutions, create opportunities for development of our country. I think uh, this is something that, uh, so uh, this is, these are some of the cycles that I talked about. There's a fourth cycle that is coming, and that is supposed to be what uh, Professor Kunjari also mentioned, artificial intelligence. There are many other important areas like biotechnology and nanotechnology that is also coming up. How do we prepare our citizens, our students for the future are issues that need to be addressed by the, the educators. And I think with these few words, I take this opportunity once again to thank Future Kerala for this organizing this, for this, organizing this very important function which addresses an important issue regarding the future of education in the state. Thank you very much.